Hey guys, welcome back. Howie here at High Octane Cards for a preview of Sunday's uh, 23rd annual Dixie Vodka 400 at Miami Homestead Speedway. Of course, they use the metric qualifying system again, so Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano will make up your front row. <clears throat> a little bit of quick history about Homestead and the, the track. Uh, groundbreaking was in 1993. Of course, this was after the Hurricane Andrew went through in 1993 and devastated the area um the track opened in 1995 the bush series was the first series of course xfinity series now the bush series was the first series to race dale jarrett won the first race there it was a very competitive race it did have a lot of crashes the track at the time was configured in a rectangular uh, shape versus the oval that you see now it was a flat banked rectangular track designed to look similar to the indianapolis motor speedway <clears throat> In 1997, John Nemechek, Joe's Nemechek's brother, uh, crashed fatally at the track during a truck series race. Later that year, uh, track management decided to reconfigure the track, and it went to a, an, an oval shape. So it looked very similar to Milwaukee or Loudoun in terms of layout. Flat, wide, sweeping corners, and just short straightaways compared to what a, a one-and-a-half-mile track would normally have. Then in 2003, they added the variable banking. In 2005, the lights were added. So the track itself has had three or four different faces when you look at it. So the, the rectangular track offered a really close racing, but a lot of crashes because the entries into the corner were a lot tighter. Four 90-degree corners were just very difficult for the cars and trucks of the Craftsman Truck Series at time to handle. When they reconfigured it into the oval layout, it was very, very flat and became very uncompetitive. And they were actually using the apron of the track to get the cars to turn because it was just, the banking was so flat. I think it was maybe six or eight degrees. Again, you go back and look at races at 99 and 2000, and it's difficult to tell if you're racing at Miami or Milwaukee just looking at the track surface. So anyway, the, the track configuration now with the variable banking is very, very competitive. So it's always had some really, really great races. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got some notes here that we'll go over real quick. Um, from 20, 2002 to 2019, it hosted the final Cup Series race of the year. Of course, uh, Jamie McMurray has the track record. I believe that was 2004, 181.111 miles an hour. Kyle Busch has the race record at 142.654 miles an hour in 2019, so it's very recent. Uh, Tony Stewart won the first cup race in 1999. Of course, we talked about the configuration change in 97. Bush Series started in 95. Cup came in 98. I believe the truck started in 97 as well. They ran an exhibition race in 95 and 96, I think. they 96 or 97 was the first truck race. Um, in 2004... Of course, this was the first year of the the playoff format or the the chase for the cup as they called it back then. Uh, the 2004 race had 17 yellows for seven, 14 yellows for 79 laps. Almost a third of the race was run under caution. Kind of couple interesting other stats here. The pole winner has only won three times at the track, and Denny Hamlin has started the furthest back in 2009 when he started 38th and won the race. Another interesting fact that I that I looked up, Roush, Jack Roush's team, Roush Fenway, won seven of the first 12 races, and they have not won since. So I thought that was pretty amazing, the dominance that Jack Roush's team had early on at Homestead under two different configurations. Because, <coughs> excuse me, because mind you, the, the Bush Series did run on, on the uh, rectangular uh, layout. Pontiac won the first two races, Dodge won the third race there. And those two manufacturers, of course, are no longer active. Uh, Ford has eight wins, Chevy has five, and Toyota has six. So pretty even there when you consider the layout of the field. I believe uh, Chevy has the most cars right now. Chevy and Ford have the most cars. Toyota has the fewest, but they seem to be the strongest recently. Uh, my favorites for the race, and then again, this is just would be if I'm doing DraftKings or something, the guys that I think you're going to get you the most points. And, of course, the guys that I think they're going to do well. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, and Martin Truex Jr. Those four have been very uh, 
good recent winners at the track. Of course, three of those guys have won championships there. Hamlin has the most wins of all the active drivers with three wins. So I think those four guys are going to be really strong. Why didn't I pick Chase Elliott? He's only got two top fives in five races there. I, I just don't see this being one of Chase's strong tracks. <clears throat> Dark Horse candidates, people that I think that that could do good there and could get you a lot of points in a fantasy league. These guys don't have any wins there. Uh, Kyle Larson, he runs super strong there. He's got three top fives. Tyler Reddick has a top five in his only race there, and of course he's won two races there in Xfinity, uh, 2018 and 2019, clinching his Xfinity Series titles. Eric Almarola, a bit of a home track for him, so I think he always runs a little stronger there, just like he does at Daytona. And Austin Dillon... He doesn't have any stats that really show that, that that he's got a really, really strong chance here. But I just think Austin Dillon is, is having a good year so far. I look for him as a dark horse. <clears throat> I got four underdog picks here. Uh, I'm going to start with Corey LaJoy. Corey's had a strong start to the season with Spire Motorsports, a brand new team. They come out of the box with the top 10 at Daytona. They had a mediocre run on the road course, and I kind of expected that. But with... Uh, Ganassi Power and, and, and Ganassi Technical Support and Alliance, I think they're going to be really strong down there. I think Chase Briscoe is a candidate for a strong run, even though it's, his, it's only his third career start in the Cup Series and it's his first at Homestead. I think he'll do fairly well. Ross Chastain, again, I look at him as an underdog because he hasn't had the opportunity in the top-notch rides in the Cup Series to really show what he can do just yet. <clears throat> and this one's kind of going out of the box a little bit, but Daniel Suarez. Again, uh, it, it's a track that I think suits Suarez's driving style. He did win the Xfinity title there a few years back. And the Trackhouse team, they, they seem to be just, just gaining their steps and picking up pieces. They got caught in the, the accident at Daytona and had a pretty competitive race at the road course at Daytona. Um, but to a few of the people here in the lineup, which I've pulled up now, uh, Michael McDowell, of course, has had a really strong start to the season. He starts six under this metric qualifying. I don't look for a lot of things from him, although this is the... Outside of road courses and super speedways, Daytona and Talladega, this is the only other track that Michael has a top 10 career finish on. So <clears throat> he, he could do good, but I, I just don't see him hanging up there very long. Again, we talked about um, Almarola and Larson. I think Alex Bowman could be a sleeper this weekend. He starts in the 13th position. Uh, Bubba Wallace, you know, this new team with the, the technical support from Gibbs, I think they could be pretty strong. They start in 19th. Matt DiBenedetto, if you want to go for somebody that's going to gain points for uh, gaining positions, pick up Matty D. He starts 37th. I, I think he could be a sleeper pick as well. Uh, there's just all sorts of uh, strong guys sprinkled all throughout the lineup. Only 38 cars starting, so nobody DNQ'd for the race. There are 17 Chevys, 16 Fords, so pretty even with those two manufacturers and only five Toyotas, so the four Gibbs cars and the 2311 team. So th this, I think, will be a pretty competitive race. I, I don't have any crazy predictions like cautions or who's going to be the stage winners or anything like that. But I believe one of the four guys that I picked at the favorites, those will be the four contending for the win. The four underdogs or the four dark horses, I think they will be the, they'll be contending for top fives. The four dark horse guys, they'll be floating around that 15th to 25th position. And if something happens up front and, and strategy cycles around, those four guys, any of those four guys could have a really good run and potentially a win. So anyway, we're going to just uh, conclude this video. Thanks guys for watching. I'll have uh, some card videos up here a little bit later. We will go ahead and open up one of the blaster boxes of the 2017 Donruss. So y'all seem to be liking these preview videos we're doing. So we're going to keep doing them until you guys don't like them anymore. I'm having fun with it, learning a little bit when, in the research that I'm doing and kind of going down memory lane a little bit myself, thinking, yeah, I remember when that happened, or man, I, I forgot all about that. So it's kind of cool to go back and, and relive some of this NASCAR history. So once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, tune in a little bit later, and we'll be opening up some of these uh, 2017 Donruss, one of the 2017 Donruss uh, blaster boxes. So thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday.